trilogy. No. I wrote it as a standalone. Um, I had a very, like, I had a different epilogue that wrapped it up, and I wanted to do a companion novel. So I always had the idea for the second book uh, that would be a search for legend's identity, but originally it was much, it was much more of a companion novel, even though now it's like, it still kind of reads that way. Like, a lot of people yeah. have told me they read it before reading Caravel and that it stands alone really well. But then, like, the third book, you know, you have to have read both books. But so, yeah, I I did not plan on a trilogy at all. But did you know it was going to be a trilogy before it, like, it was actually officially published? No. Okay. Yeah. I only, it wasn't until, like, I started writing Legendary um, that I realized there needed to be a third book. Okay. I'm going to skip my next question because you already basically answered it. Well, so what made you combine the two... Um, points of view for the last one? Uh, just because it was the way the story needed to be told. Like, I knew all along, I knew all along, like, that when I wrote the next book, and I think this is why, like, I changed point of views for it, was that I didn't want to write Scarlet. I didn't want a sequel from Scarlet's point of view because I don't like the sequels where the love interests are just ripped apart or fighting the whole time. And I was like, that's the natural progression of Scarlet and Julian's relationship. Because, like, I'm all for happy for now endings, mm -hmm. which is what Caraval has. But it's like knowing, like, once you turn that page, their relationship falls apart. Because as much as I love Julian, it's entirely built on lies. And lies that she still doesn't even know the answer to. Like, there are more lies. So it's not just the lies he told Caraval, but other lies he's holding on to. And so I didn't want Legendary from Scarlet's perspective. Because I was like, I don't want to read about them just fighting. And I don't want to write that as a book, but then I wanted to give them resolution. And at the end of Legendary, it's very clear that Tella needs resolution too. So it just, it seemed like natural for both of them. Um, what's the most creative fan art that you've seen for your books? You know, I don't know that I can say the most because I feel like I've been really blessed in terms of like so many artists. So many artists have created so many amazing things. Um, I really do feel like the book boxes that did the like, uh, like Al Kate and Gary Lou both did book boxes for like special edition ones for finale, and both of them had incredible art. So like Al Kate did this deck of destiny where the artists really had like detailed pictures taken straight from the book for like. I think it was like a dozen different characters. And um, Fairy Loot had tons of art. There was a huge, huge blanket of like all of the characters and then character cards that I worked closely on with them. So um, I think both those book boxes probably had the most amazing art I've ever seen. Okay. Um, kind of going back, what inspired Caraval? Um, so Caraval came from. I usually answer this question differently every time I'm asked it because the way like I see inspiration is like seeds like you get one seed and it's big enough to like grow something and then everything else springs off of that and there were several seeds that helped like inspire Caraval um, and you know at first there was like the idea for the game which is a really long way of getting there but like the simpler ones were I was listening to um, the Fall Out Boy song Centuries and it was the first time I'd ever heard it when it like came on the radio and I loved it instantly but also I just felt like um, I'd been playing with this idea for a game but I didn't know have any characters and um, there was something about the lyrics and how the lyrics are like um, some legends are told some turn to death or to gold but you'll remember me for centuries and I just had the idea of this character in my head um, named Legend yes. and and I'd always wanted to read about a character named Legend because the Marie Lou book, Legend, I thought was about a character named Legend. <laughs> and it wasn't. And it's, it was not. It wasn't. But it was an <laughs> awesome book. And I love the book. But I think ever since then, I've been waiting for someone else to write that character. And then suddenly I heard the song. And then I was like, I should write the character. And so once I figured him out, more of the world came. Um, and then I was also like watching a Bob Lerman movie, The Great Gatsby. Okay. And it was the party scene with all the fireworks and the champagne. And, and I knew that I wanted a book that felt like that movie. That was just like 
bright and bold and a little over the top. So um, those are some of the pieces, but there were a lot of like, I spent like a year and a half just kind of like collecting things that really inspired me and like then putting them together. Are you a planner or a pantser? Um, I, you know, it's interesting because I feel like for a long time I was always like, I am a pantser, but I think because like when I heard the like, are you a plotter? I thought it meant like you follow the save the cat model. Mm -hmm. And I don't follow the save the cat model. It doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like, I'll come up with like a, my idea and then like I like to come up with possible possible paths that it can take. So like for Caraval, um, I I used to say like I I wasn't a plotter at all, but the truth was I had like different avenues for like if everything in this book is real, if this is all a game, if some of the things are real or if they're all a game, and I just kept like recharting. So it's like I'm like a GPS constantly recharting. So as I write, it's like, oh it can go this way, like and I always give different options. So it's kind of a combination of the above. Like I spend a lot of time kind of exploring all the possibilities mm -hmm. for the story um, so that when I write it, my characters have choices. Like it could go this way or it could go this way because I've mapped out enough of like the world and the possibilities of the story because I don't want to write a story that it's like very, like you know where it's going from page right. one. Like, not usually as I'm writing, like, 
I'll usually like the bigger things come up with like in the brainstorming phase, but a lot of times I don't know which ones are going to play out. It's just like this could happen, this could happen. Um, I don't know that there was anything that really, really surprised me though. Okay. Um, I'm going full out into Legendary now. Uh -huh. um, it was often difficult to know how to feel about Jax. So as you were writing, did you see him as a villain? You know, I love Jax. Jax, I think he's a character I've loved from the start. Like, my first draft of Legendary had no care about, it had very little legend. I like, came with the idea for Jax and I was obsessed. Um, and it's interesting because I wouldn't, I mean, I feel like he is the villain in Legendary, but I don't think of him as a villain. I just think right. of him as a character who wants things and right. he does. He has no line when it comes to getting what he wants. So, like, there's no line he won't cross if he really wants something. And so, it means he does terrible things. Right. Um, but it's not like he's set out to be the villain. Like, it's usually what he wants is, like, for himself. Like, um, and so, like, I think, like, I always like to say I love Jack. He's my favorite because he's the worst. He's the kind that you love to hate. Yeah. yeah. And people have a really differing opinions on him. Right. Like, I think it's obvious if you read the books that I love him because I have so much fun writing him and because he's so easy for me to write because I always know he's going to do whatever he needs to do to get what Put he wants. Put morality aside if it means that yeah. you want. And yeah. sometimes it doesn't seem like he's doing that. Sometimes he might even seem like he's being kind, but he never is. <laughs> right. Um, so, this is one, it's a spoiler for, like, a theme in the finale. Okay. But you might or might not be able to answer it. Okay. So, we'll see. Um, so there, there's a lot in finale about the difference between certain emotions that some characters have. So, I would, I would argue that love is a factor in the story way earlier than anybody in the story seems to acknowledge that. Um, so what do you see as the line between love and, like, infatuation Obsession, attraction. Ooh, okay, that's a good question. Because um, that is what the whole book is about. Right, like, but, it's, but it's not like specific spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they like to joke, the series is about saving the world with love. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, I think to me what it comes down to um, is kind of like selfishness versus selflessness. You know, because like I think love is not love is not selfish and so I think a lot of times it's like in this book like characters can even do something um because I've gotten like a lot a lot of a lot of emails about a certain character people didn't like the ending this character got because they thought they deserved better mm -hmm. and it was like well their choices were ultimately always selfish right like there wasn't love like it might even seem like love like dude these characters have some really good chemistry right but like I think love Love. And I don't think of love as a feeling. Like, I think love is a feeling, but it's not always just a feeling. Like, sometimes it is, like, sometimes love is, like, making this choice for someone else. Like, you're choosing, like, it's a commitment, and it's you're choosing not to be selfish. And sometimes it is just a feeling that you're swept away with, and you can't control right. how you feel about someone or that you love someone. Like, it's just there. Um, but then sometimes, you know, you make make that choice to love someone and not to be selfish and to choose them over what you want so I think there's a lot I think there's a lot of lines but I think what it ultimately comes down to is like not not being selfish 